This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everybody. It's Jan Romano. I'm from Mass Higher Metro North Career Centers. I'm the technology instructor here in Woburn, Cambridge, and Chelsea. And today we're going to go over some MS Word training, uh, part two. And so we'll go over uh, maybe a review of some of the basics that we learned before. And then we're also going to learn some new things. So we're going to focus on, let's take a look at what we'll focus on today. We're going to focus on inserting pictures. So we'll do a review of that, inserting text boxes, doing some copy and pasting, putting in some headers and footers, and a cover page. And so what I'd like to do is I'll shut off my camera so we can focus right on the uh, presentation. And what I'll do is I'll have a PowerPoint presentation, as you can see, and I'll also jump into my Microsoft Word as well. And so we'll do that live. And so that's what we'll be doing uh, today. So thank you for joining me. And here we go. So we are going to, as I mentioned, go over some of these topics that you should know for Microsoft Word. And some of the topics are putting in pictures and text boxes to make your uh, documents more visually interesting. So if I go to inserting pictures, I will show you that there are quite a few steps to insert the picture, about six steps. And oh, I see an error there, so we'll fix that error in a minute. But we'll be able to click on insert and insert a picture. I also am going to go over formatting the picture and making sure that you're able to wrap the picture and move it, but a little bit more than what we did in our basic class. So in part one, we talked about inserting the picture. In part two, we'll do that again, but we'll also talk about formatting the picture a little bit further. So right now, I'll click on online pictures. And what's going to come up is a document that you might have seen in part two and part, excuse me, part one, uh, where we went through um, entering uh, all of the formatting for Enter the Sweet Tooth recipe contest. And we dressed up this document. And as we dressed up this document, I'm going to open it now so that you can see what it looks like. And we dressed it up and we put a picture in there to make it look a little bit more visually interesting. We used some color and we used different fonts. We changed the size of the text. We went through and we put some bullets and numbering and some double underlining in. We also added in that picture. So I'm gonna delete that picture so that I can start from the beginning and talk about inserting a picture. And where would you get that picture from? Well, let's click on insert from the ribbon. Let's find the pictures button. And what you would do is you find a picture, either that's already on your computer, so that would be called this device, or you can search for it using the web. And when I click on online pictures, you will see that we're able to click in this search box and we're able to search for a picture that we might want to use. And as I mentioned earlier, this document is about a sweet recipe contest. This is the Sweet Tooth Candy Shop. And maybe I'll put in a picture of some candy instead of a cake this time. So I'll look for candy and I do want you to notice this looks more like a clip art, which is more of a drawing. And these M&Ms are more of a picture. And so as I'm going through, I'm looking for something that I might want to use. Um, and any of these choices would of course be fine. And so I'll take this picture right here with the M&Ms and the Snickers and click and insert that in. Now when it comes into the document, it's hardly able to be moved. It can move a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, but not very well. So we're going to have to format that. It also comes with who took the picture. And I want you to notice right here, it says this photo was taken by an unknown author. So I don't want the audience or this is a flyer. I don't want my that information on the flyer. So I click my mouse once on the text. Then I see that the text is in a text box because I can see a dotted border around the text. And I bring my mouse and I click on any part of that border. And then I use my delete key on my keyboard and that text will be gone. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. The second thing I'm going to do is make sure that I'm going to be able to move this where I want it to go. So I'm going to come up here to format. And in the part two, at 
part one. I know that I keep saying that that's part, part two is what we're doing right now. But part one, I showed you that format wrap text is where I like to go. But the same button is right here if I wanted to use this. And all of these same choices are going to be in the wrap text button. When I click on the wrap text button, I, I see words which are going to help me understand what I'm trying to do. How do I want the, to wrap the text around this picture? So if I do top and bottom, wherever I move this picture, the text will always stay on the top or the bottom of the picture. I like to choose in front of text and move this around. And that way there, I'm not bumping the text out of the way. And then I can decide where I want to put it. I can go to a corner handle. These circles around the outside edge are handles and they're sizing handles. If I bring my mouse to a corner handle, I want you to notice I get a double arrow and the double arrow, I'm going to drag my mouse, hold down my left mouse button and drag in the direction of that double arrow. And that'll size it. If I bring my mouse again, and drag down, it'll size it larger. If I drag this way, smaller. So let's say I want to keep it right here. So I did format wrap text in front of and I moved it right here. What else can I do to this picture? Well, on the format tab, there's a color button. On the left hand side in the adjust group is a color button. When I click on color, I can enhance the color or dim the color depending on what I'm looking for. So I'm going to click on this and it enhances the color and that way there I can maybe see each one of these candy bars. Then there's something underneath color, so format, and I'm looking for artistic effects. Now artistic effects are just that, they're a little bit more artistic and so maybe they're a way to make the picture look a little bit more visually interesting. So it kind of look fuzzy or blurry and you're thinking why would I want to do that well there are occasions why you might and or I might want to look make it look a little bit more um, uh, black and white or um, see-through type so I'm going to leave it like that and that looks visually interesting now I can also come up to format and choose a picture style when I click the down arrow I can decide to put this in a frame I can decide to make it look like a mouse pad Kind of have a fuzzy border around it. We'll put a reflection. I can do all kinds of choices as I move my mouse around. You can see that these choices are being shown. And this one kind of looks like a mouse pad, and the candy bars are kind of like draping over the edge of the mouse pad. And so there may be different things that you want to do. And remember, all you've got to do is click on the picture, go up to format. And there's all kinds of things that you can do. Picture styles, artistic effects, color, and there's something called picture effects as well. If I click on picture effects, I can put a shadow on this object. I can put a reflection, which shows up in the front instead of the back. I can put a glow on this object. So say I want to have kind of a blue glow on it, I can do that as well. I can go back to picture effects and make it look a little bit more industrial or how about 3D? Maybe I want it to lie down. And now it's again formatted so that it's more visually interesting. Anything I don't like, I can always hit undo right away and bring that back to the way it was. So we used format, we used wrap text in order to move this around. We did picture effects. We did border styles or picture styles. We did color. And we did artistic effects. So try those out when you have a picture. They can make your text or your document, I should say, look a little bit more visually interesting. Well, let me show you another example. I'm going to go to a document, and it is a document that says, Shush, it's a secret. Come help us surprise Sammy on her 25th birthday when, and remember, don't tell Sammy, and here are some 
ways to get in touch and only tell if you're not coming. So that is an invitation in a sense, but it could be made more like a Microsoft Word document and email to someone. Well, maybe I want a birthday cake or balloons on this particular document. So again, I'll show you how it's done. Insert off of the ribbon, pictures. I'll go to online pictures and search. I'll click in the search box and type balloons. I'll look for some balloons that I think will look good. I'll just take the first ones for now and click on insert. And so these balloons pop up and notice the text is pushed down. Don't worry about that. Remember there's where this picture came from. So I click on that text. I click on the border, use my delete key. And now I'm going to follow the same steps that I did before. Format, wrap text. And I'll choose in this case in front of. Now I really don't want these balloons to be in front of, but I think I'll just move them around a little bit so that maybe I'll make them a little bit bigger. And then I'll decide to put them behind the text. Same place, format, wrap text. Instead of in front of, I'm going to choose behind the text. Now I do want you to notice I still have a border around my balloons. I'm still on my balloons. It's put the balloons behind the text. Let me make this smaller so you can actually see. But the balloons are quite vivid, and so maybe I want to make them less colorful so that the text is visible. So remember, format, and where do I go? Color. And these are the choices. I can make them more black and white, I can make them more green but I'm going to choose this choice, which is called washout. When I click on washout, it makes the balloons a little less bright, actually a little bit more bright, uh, less bright. Maybe I want them to be a little bit more brighter in just a moment, I'll show you how to do that. But you're gonna be able to put these behind text and make them look a little bit more washed out. Now, if I click on the balloons and I go back to format, I go back to color. And what if I want them just a, a little brighter? Well, I can use some of these color saturation and color tones. I can also come down here to picture color options. When I click on picture color options on the right hand side, the screen is going to show me a window with picture color, picture corrections, and all kinds of choices that I can make. So I can choose color saturation and increase the saturation of the color and the tone. I can choose picture correction. So it's a little bit of like um, Photoshop, not much, but a little. And I could decide if I want the sharpness, if I want it to be sharper, if I want it to be brighter. And I can make these differences, these changes, and they make a difference in my actual picture. So I can make the contrast a little bit more. I can saturate the color. And so you see the delay, it is a little bit of a delay as I make a choice, but you can see what's happening. And if I don't like that choice, I just hit undo and it will change back in just a moment. So the picture corrections and the picture color take a little bit of time, but you can enhance your uh, pictures color-wise and also you can wash them out. So putting a picture behind your text is always something that's a little bit more visually interesting um, and gives just a little bit more um, uh, visual interest and pop to a flyer or document that you are using. So let me go back to my PowerPoint and we've worked on online pictures, we've inserted a picture and we formatted the picture. Now I wanna talk about text boxes. Text boxes are a great way to add in like a quote or some text inside some other text, as well as maybe putting some text in the margins. So I'll go back to a document. I'm going to use this document right here. And this document is a, just a couple page document. And maybe in the left margin, I would like it to have some text going down on the left hand side. 
maybe I'd like to add some text right here in the middle and, and, and move this uh, text from left to right. So these are things that I can do by inserting, I'm going to go to insert off of the ribbon, text box. When I click on text box, I get to choose the several types of text boxes. I'll just choose the simple text box. It shows up wherever my cursor was or wherever it shows up is actually fine. And I can type inside. And let's say I'm just going to type the words Mass Hire, Metro North, Career Center. Notice it's in a text box. Notice if I go to the border of the text box, I can move it right or left and up or down. And notice as I'm moving it, the text is actually bouncing around. Now I want you to notice that the text is to the left and to the right. Why? Let me go to Format, Wrap Text. Whenever you have an object, you always like a picture or a text box, you always go to Wrap Text and decide how you want the text to wrap. So I'm going to show you that there's the word tight here, and I can choose tight, and what that means is the text can be tight around my text box if I want it to be. Or I could just choose wrap text, top and bottom. And wherever I move this, the text will only show above and below my text box. So there are many things that I can do. The other thing that I can do is, let me move this up a little bit so everybody can see it, is I can put this in my left margin and maybe rotate it. And so I'm going to rotate it Notice as I'm moving my mouse, it's rotating. Why? Because I'm getting my mouse on top of this rotate button and I'm dragging this around. So let's say I drag this around and I want it to look slanted and then I might want to wrap text and maybe put it in front of or behind and I can put this behind my text. I can also drag it over here, and let's say I wrap it a little bit, or rotate it, I should say. Now, if you're having a hard time like I'm having with my rotate, you can certainly come up to your format menu, and there is a rotate button, which lets you rotate 90 degrees left and right, and flip it vertical, and there are more rotating options. So you can certainly do that. But I've got it over here on the left-hand side, and now I can keep that, I can make it larger. I actually can make it look like it's floating on the left. How? I can click on the text box, come back up to format. And this is, a text box is actually, we consider it a shape. And so what I could do is I could say shape outline. So the text inside a box is basically a shape and I can say no outline. Now, a little border will still be around it, but if I click off of it, you'll see that it's no outline. So I can have this text look larger, smaller, angled, but it's in a text box that I can move around and I can rotate and I can decide where it should go and I can decide how the other text is going to uh, appear with my text box. So a text box is pretty uh, versatile and you're able to put text anywhere in the document um, and especially the right and left margins are places you can't type in the top margin. You could put a header or a footer which we'll go over but the right and left you might want to put in a text box. And that text box again the text inside you can highlight. You can do everything that you've learned before. You can change the font. You can bold. You can make the font bigger and you would just make the text box larger with using the handles if you want the text to look a little different. You can get inside the text box and center the text. This time it won't center in the whole margin area, it'll only center in the text box. So you can certainly do that and put this anywhere you want. Now a text box can also be clicked on the border of it and delete with the delete key and the whole text box is gone. So you can work with text boxes. I'll hit undo and bring that back. You can rotate, you can move them wherever you want. 
you can do format, wrap text, and decide how you want the text to always show. Maybe I want the text, no matter where I move it, to be on the top and the bottom of this text box. So that's a text box. So you're taking your text, your document, you're adding in pictures, you're adding in text boxes that may be um, more uh, beneficial to the uh, person who's looking at your document and seeing that it's more visually interesting with these two things that you might want to do. All right. Copy, cut, and paste is always something that you'll need to do. And when you do copy, cut, and paste, you can certainly use your keyboard with Control C, Control V, Control X um, for copy, cut, and paste. You can use the right mouse, mouse button. You can also use the uh, buttons on the uh, ribbon. So we're going to go over that. So let me go to the document. And I'm going to bring up a resume. And this resume has education at the top. And so education at the top isn't bad if it's if it's relevant or if it's uh, very um, recent. Um, but this education, as you see, was from 2012. So education in this case, since this person has some um, work history, we should move the education to the end of the resume, let's say. So I'm going to highlight this text just by dragging. So I'm going to take education and drag down. And then remember, there are three ways. I can do copy, cut, and paste, three different ways. But I want you to notice on the ribbon, on the Home tab, cut is a pair of scissors, which means move. Copy has two pieces of paper that look the same. Copy means leave the text here and make a copy so that you could paste it somewhere else. And here's your paste button. Cut, I'm gonna click on cut, and that cuts it out of the document. And that puts it in what we call a clipboard. And that clipboard you don't see right now, but you can see it if you want by clicking on this clipboard button. But that clipboard, you kind of have to just assume that it's sitting in the clipboard. And so you come down wherever you want it to go, and click the mouse wherever you want this to go. So I'm on the second page. And I'm going to come up to this paste button. And I'm going to click the top of the paste button and paste. And it puts this text that I cut from page one up here. And it now puts it here where I had clicked my mouse to paste. So you can cut and paste and copy and paste. So a copy would leave the original, a cut would move it. So say, for example, I wanted to take for this paragraph right here, and I wanted to copy this paragraph. Another way to do it is instead of using my copy button on my ribbon, which is fine to use, I can get inside this gray area and right click. And when I right click, it always brings up a shortcut menu. And do you notice cut and copy and paste are here? I'm going to click copy with my left mouse button. A copy means this text stays here in this resume, but a copy of it has now been placed in the clipboard. I can go to any other document. Say I'm trying to create a brand new resume, so I'll do file new and blank document, and I might want to put this text in here. Now I could use my paste button. Or I could right click. And there are several choices on paste. And I wanted to show you that you could paste using the theme, which means the font. In this case, it would be Calibri 11. Paste it into this document based on this destination. Paste it into the document using the source formatting. So the formatting that I brought this document from may be different than the document that I'm going to. So I might want to keep the for source formatting. Merging the formatting, bringing them both together. Maybe it's a picture, and maybe it's just plain text. So I'm just going to say use the destination theme, which is the first paste button right here. And now this information has been copied from this resume and pasted into another document using my copy and paste. So cut means move, copy means make a copy of, paste means put, 
and you can use your keyboard, you can use your home tab in these buttons, you can also use your um, right mouse button. Now the next thing I want to talk about are headers and footers in a document. Because remember I said you can put a text box in um, and maybe you would want some information at the top of every document or the bottom, like a page number. So I want to talk about that next and I'm going to jump into a document. Let's see if I can use this document right here. And this is the North Country Project. Remember we used our text box. We put it in here. This document has a couple of pages and maybe I want to put in something called a cover page and then some page numbering. So I'm going to click my mouse right here and I am going to put my mouse in front of the word the and I'm going to go to insert. Now I want you to notice the first button on the insert tab is what we call cover page. And I'm going to click on cover page and there are certain choices here that I might like and I could always create my own but I like to use the ones that Microsoft Word give me and so maybe I'll click on this one right here and now it has created a cover page and I can actually type in information here and use this as my very first page. As I scroll down I still have my document but now there are three pages in this document. Maybe I want to put page numbering at the bottom of every page. There are a couple of ways to do this. Notice I'm going to go to the Insert tab off of the ribbon. I'm going to click on Footer. Now I could click on Page Number, but I'm going to click on Footer. Header means I want the information that I'm looking for at the top. Footer means I want it at the bottom of the document. So I'm going to click on Footer. And I'm going to decide that maybe I want page numbering. So I'll, maybe I'll choose this choice. And it will show up at the bottom of the document. And notice it says footer. Now sometimes you can come in here and also type whatever you want. So let's say I want my name at the bottom. I can also have that showing up at the bottom of every single page. So notice. It'll say Jan Romano at the bottom of every page. So notice again, I can go to insert, I can go to footer, or maybe I'll choose page number this time so I can show you that. And where would I want the page number? Maybe at the bottom of the page. And how would I want the page number? I might want it centered in the middle of the bottom of the page. So I click on that. And notice the number one shows up. Now, Remember I chose a footer and I put my name in. Well, now I chose another footer, so that replaces that first footer. But let's say I come up here and do close header and footer. So now this is my first page of text and nicely it says page one. This is my second page of text and nicely it says page two. It doesn't put a page number on the cover page. Microsoft Word is programmed to know that a cover page doesn't have a page number on it, and it's actually counted as a zero page, page numbered zero, but no number on it. And so that's why this has a one at the bottom, and this has a two at the bottom. So you can insert a cover page, and you can insert headers and footers or page numbering. Now, I'll do a header before we go. I'll do insert, click on a header, you can choose from a header or you can click on blank and type your own. So say again, I want to put my name at the top of every page. I type in the header section. I come up to the ribbon and click under header and footer. Design is a new tab that popped up. I click on close header and footer. Now take a look. The top has my name. The bottom of the page has a number. and the bottom of the page has a number two, and the top of the second page has my name. Now, some people will say they don't want a page number on the very first page. So that is a, a choice. I can double click on this page number, and I can say different first page. So I can adjust whatever I want on the first page. I can also have different 
footers and headers on even and odd pages. So that's a choice as well. So there's my cover page and there is my document. So what did we go over today? Inserting pictures, inserting text boxes, copy and paste, headers and footers, and a cover page. So these are some of the topics that um, I feel that are part two. We did part one, the basics, and we did now part two. And so I'm hoping that you are able to practice these and uh, just take a document that you uh, create from scratch to file new, type everything in plainly, format it, and now try some of these choices as well. And so we'll be coming back to you shortly uh, with a part three of Microsoft Word as well. So thank you so much for joining me today and um, good luck practicing. Until next time.